This homemade strawberry cake is so tender and moist and delicious, you're gonna love it. It's got a full pound of fresh strawberries packed into the cake layers, then it's layered with more fresh strawberries and strawberry cream cheese frosting. It's just chock full of real strawberries, nothing artificial, no jello, and it's so delicious. Hi, I'm Lindsay from Life, Love & Sugar, and today we're making homemade strawberry cake. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take your strawberries, pop them into your food processor and puree them. And then we'll head on over to the stove and cook it down. You wanna make sure you have good tasting strawberries because this is where the flavor of your cake is coming from. So if strawberries aren't in season, it may not be a good time to make this cake. So now you're just gonna to wanna to pour your puree right into your saucepan. So you wanna cook it down to about 3 fourths a cup. It should come to a light boil. Pour it into your measuring cup, pop it in the fridge, and let it cool. All right, so once your strawberry puree has been reduced and cooled to at least room temperature, you're ready to move on. Um, this cake actually uses the reverse creaming method. So what we're gonna do is start by combining our wet ingredients, and then we'll move on to the dry. Strawberry puree first. Then we will add our sour cream and our milk and vanilla extract, and our eggs. All right, now we're gonna whisk all this together. Once all that's combined, you're gonna wanna add about one cup of that mixture to this measuring cup. So you're gonna have about one and a half cups here and one cup here, and we'll use those two later. All right, so now we'll go ahead and put our dry ingredients together. We've got some all-purpose <coughs> flour, sugar, and then baking powder, baking soda, and some salt. We'll whisk all that together. We'll pop this on our mixer. So now we're gonna add our butter, one tablespoon at a time to our dry ingredients. We're gonna keep our mixer on low and kind of let it incorporate before we add the next tablespoon. And eventually this will kind of start to look like wet sand. Once you have that ready, you can add your larger measuring cup of wet ingredients that we combined earlier. And then we're gonna combine this on low speed until everything gets moistened, and then we're gonna turn it up to medium high for about a minute until everything gets light and fluffy. All right, now we're gonna add the rest of our wet ingredients. We're gonna keep this on low and just kinda strain these ingredients in here until they're incorporated and then we'll turn it back up for a few seconds just to make sure everything's well mixed in there. So at this point, I'm gonna add some pink food coloring to your batter so that it has kind of a nice pink strawberry looking color. About seven or eight drops. Gently fold it into the cake batter. You don't wanna end up over mixing your batter. I like to spray the sides of my cake pans with some baking spray and then line the bottom of them with parchment circles just to be sure that the cake doesn't stick. And then I actually like to use a food scale to measure out my cake batter so that I know that it's divided evenly between the pans and that they're gonna bake evenly. Once you have your cake batter in your pans, I use my offset spatula to just kind of spread them out and make them even. All right, now we'll pop these into the oven to bake. While your cake is baking and cooling, you can go ahead and make your strawberry cream cheese frosting. For the strawberry flavor in this frosting, we are actually gonna use freeze-dried strawberries. Because cream cheese frosting is already naturally so soft, we don't wanna add more puree to that because it'll just be impossible to work with. So freeze-dried strawberries give us the same flavor, but with using a powder instead of a liquid. And these to our food processor, and then we'll grind them into a powder. So we're gonna start by adding our cream cheese and our butter. Pop this on the mixer and mix it together until it's nice and smooth. All right, so that's nicely combined. So we'll go ahead and add about half of our powdered sugar. This is a good bit of powdered sugar, but we need to add volume and stability to our cream cheese frosting. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and scrape down the sides of the bowl and then add our strawberry powder. pinch of salt, mix that together and then we're ready to go. All right. Okay, so once your cakes are cooled and your frosting is ready, it's time to layer everything together. The first thing that I'll do is remove the domes from the top of my cake so that they're flat. I like to just make sure that everything is really level so that when my cake is layered, things aren't sliding all over the place and getting wonky. All right, so we're gonna wanna add about a cup of frosting to our cake layer and spread that evenly. So once you have your frosting spread evenly onto your cake layer, you're gonna wanna add about half of your chopped strawberries. You can just evenly spread those out over your frosting. And then you're gonna wanna press that down into the frosting. And then I add just a touch more frosting to the top of the strawberries so I have a nice thin layer that the next cake layer can stick to the top of. It can be a little tricky to spread it because of all the juice from the strawberries. You just want to add a little bit of frosting on top of there. Now we'll add our second layer of cake. And then another layer of frosting. We'll add the rest of our chopped strawberries now. And again, press those down into the frosting. All right, another thin layer of frosting on top. And then we'll add our final layer of cake on top. So before frosting the sides, I'm gonna add some frosting to the top of the cake. I use about a full cup on the top of the cake. And now to frost the sides of the cake, I use a Wilton 789 icing tip. So this you're gonna hold right up against the side of your cake and just gradually add frosting to the side of the cake as you turn it on the turntable. So we're gonna use an icing smoother to go ahead and smooth the sides. So once you're happy with the way the sides look, we can finish off the top and corners. I start with my spatula out here and kind of pull inside to get nice corners. So you'll just kind of drag your spatula to the inside of your cake and towards the middle. And after every scrape or two, I often clean this off just so that it's clean and smooth and gives me a clean edge. And at this point, you can really just keep smoothing until you're happy with it. So once you're happy with the look of the frosting on your cake, you can go ahead and use the remainder of the frosting to pipe a border onto your cake. I'm using the Ateco 847. I'll just pipe some shells around the outside. So once we've got our border on the top of the cake here, we can use the remaining frosting to pipe a border on the bottom if we want. I tend to like to use a smaller tip on the bottom border, but you can use the same one if you like. And once you're done with frosting your cake and adding your piping, if you want to finish it off with just a nice fresh strawberry, it completes the look. Using the reverse creaming method on this cake gives it a tight crumb, but a super tender, almost silky texture. It's delicious, it's wonderful, full of real fresh strawberries. I know you're gonna love it. For the full recipe, head over to lifeloveandsugar.com.